Hello and welcome. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get set up with a very basic uh, particle system and being able to generate something like fire uh, very easily inside of Cinema 4D um, without having to have any extra plugins installed at all. So there's going to be three core components to this and they all sort of play a different part. So the first component is going to be the emitter, which is you can find it under simulate and then particles and then emitter. Uh, you can also do this with thinking particles. Uh, I'm not as um, I'm not as fluent in the thinking particles, so I'm just going to stick with the emitter. Um, and so the emitter basically controls, if we go ahead and take a look at it, currently it's pointed this way in the uh, across the blue axis here. So if we go ahead and we start dragging the timeline along, you can start seeing these little particles that are being emitted. And um, functionally, we just have a bunch of controls to basically say where these particles go. Uh, and then on top of that, we will have pyro clusters, which is going to be the thing that's going to actually like show for us. That's going to be the material that's going to actually make these particles turn into something that's visible. And then the third part of this is going to be a pyro cluster um, tracer, which will basically actually control where they show up because you can control very granularly where the actual um, pyro clusters themselves will show up once you have them emitted. So first off, let's finish talking about the emitter and get into a little bit more details of this. So fundamentally, the emitter just sort of spits out these little splines here, and these are going to be used later on in conjunction with pyro clusters to actually become sort of the geometry and stuff that we actually see in the render. So there's tons of ways that we can control it. Uh, we can use things like setting how many of the particles actually show up. For example, in this one, we just say 10, so over the course of um, 0 to 150 frames, 10 particles will be born. If we want to make that larger, let's say for example, we want to have double the amount of particles. And go ahead and do that. And then we come in and now the double the amount of particles. Um, and we can change when it starts and stops. So this is basically when we want to have the particles start formulating and this is when we want them to stop continuing. You can also change the seed so you can change sort of where they appear and stuff like that by messing around with that. Um, on top of that, the other one that's kind of important is lifetime. So this basically ties into a system that I'll talk about a little bit later called the aging system. And so functionally what we can do with this is if we go ahead and we set the lifetime to 60 frames, for example, what you'll see is that as we get all the way up to 60, let me zoom out, there are a ton of particles here, but once we actually go past that 60 mark, you'll see the oldest one right there start disappearing and they will basically just disappear as they hit the end of those frames. There's so as the particle itself has survived for 60 frames, it will then peter out and disappear. And this will be important later when we're talking about aging because that's basically just saying what the age of the particle should be. Uh, and then on top of that, there's just a ton of other things that you can mess with here to make your uh, emission look however you want. Um, additionally, inside the simulate section, there are a ton of things like forces. So you can have things like gravity and friction and wind and all that sort of stuff going through to make your um, make your particles look a little bit more realistic and have them affected by uh, actual forces. And then on top of that, just inside the emitter here, there are options for what type of emitter you want. So if you want them to emit as a cone or a pyramid, and then sort of the X and Y size of the emitter, so you can make it longer and taller and all that stuff. Um, now keep in mind, emitters will operate off of a timeline. So for example, if I have like 40 frames in and I have these particles here, if I move this, you'll notice that these particles don't move. And that's because they, uh, they update when the actual timeline updates. So if I go ahead and set this back down to zero, and now I redrag this out, now we've restarted the simulation and everything works. So make sure that uh, you keep that in mind when you're going through, because otherwise you'll have a bad time when you're trying to figure out why it's not working properly. Okay, so next is the pyro clusters themselves, which is basically the material that we're gonna be using. So for that, we're gonna need to open up the material manager. And inside the material manager, we're gonna go ahead and come into create and the materials, and then we need a pyro cluster material. Uh, I'm also going to do this with the volume tracer because we'll need that later and I'll explain what that is in a little bit here. But here we go. So this is basically the where the magic actually happens itself. So this is a pyro cluster um, material. And basically what this material does is it controls functionally how everything looks about our fire or whatever the fluid is that we're sort of um, making or whatever the particle system uh, material is going to look like. And so this is basically where we have all of our controls. Um, the first thing that I tend to like to do is actually come down into noise here, just because from here you can decide what your system's gonna kind of look like from a, um, a higher level perspective. So for example, if I wanted it to look like fire, I can come in here into the noise type and select fire, and then I can go ahead and check off things like use color, for example, and now I can actually see the color of the uh, material as we're going. 
Um, additionally, another good tool to keep in mind is that you can actually hit preview here and you can see exactly what this is going to look like. Um, and this is going, like I said before, from birth to death. So this is basically what a particle that just spawns looks like on its zeroth frame. So basically like right when it spawns, what it looks like. And this is what it would look like when it hits 60 frames. Obviously it peters out. So let's say for example, like 50 frames or something like that. This is what it would look like. So it would look like smoke. And it basically slowly goes from being fire to smoke. And that's basically what the system um, currently look like. And so, um, from there, there are a ton of things we can change. So first off, in this globals panel, um, I wouldn't touch the color necessarily. You can choose to do color this way if you really want to. I personally prefer to do it inside the noise. Um, it's entirely a preference. You can do whichever one you want. You can mess around with it as much as you want. Um, that's personally how I like to do it. But inside these globals options here, uh, you have the option for luminosity. So for example, if I crank this luminosity up a little bit, you'll see the fog, or well, the fire in this case, I guess, gets brighter. Uh, if I go ahead and crank up the density, then obviously the actual um, particles themselves will get a little bit more dense and they'll have a little bit more a uh, little bit more meat on the bones um, and then the color like I said you can use color if you want from here or you can do it from the noise I personally prefer just doing it from the noise I think it works much better when I've been using it myself and then this tab is a little bit more complicated to explain so this is the age tab this fundamentally controls what happens to this aging process of birth to death um, this is a little bit complicated to explain but functionally what's happening here is that this gradient is controlling various aspects so the radius so this is sort of like the size um, how bright it is how much of the color shines through and sort of uh, what the color actually is um, and it basically goes from left to right so this left hand side is birth this right hand side is death and so for example with the radius here it's currently darker which means that it starts smaller and then it basically gets larger as the simulation runs on, which is true, because that's exactly what happens with the fog and smoke. So because this number here, if I actually pop this little drop down here, you can see the brightness is at 50%. And when I come here, the brightness is at 100%. What this means is that it goes from being half the size it should be to basically doubling its size by the time that it dies. So if I change this to, for example, if I change this to 20%, we would see that at the very beginning, it's actually even smaller than it was initially. And then as it gets to the end, it's back to being at that 100% size. So if I go ahead and chop this back to 60, for example, then when I come back to here, the change from birth to death in terms of size is a little bit less um, severe. And the same thing can be said for the luminosity and everything else in the same way. So for example, the luminosity starts off at 100, so it's as bright as it should be um, at the very beginning. Um, for example, let's say if you wanted to have a situation where it got darker over time, so let's say we wanted to start this above 100, so let's say for example we started this at like 250%, for example, now it's brighter than it normally would be, and then maybe by the end of it you want it to be like 50% brightness, you want it to go down to half the brightness that it was before, and you'll notice as this goes and gets larger, not only does it um, show up and do everything else, but it also sort of goes down in terms of how much light it's giving off as you go through the um, as you go through the system and color mixing color is basically the same thing it's just how the colors show up um, and all of that so basically you can go through and mess with these two if you really want to um, I'm not gonna go through every single setting every single dial every single knob because I will let you guys go through and do that yourselves when you're playing around with it I just want to get you to a point where you can sort of use this fundamentally um, pretty easily. I'm going to skip over distance and cycle distance. You go. You can mess around with those as well. They Functionally, I tend to just use age because it does like pretty much the exact same thing that distance and cycle distance does. But um, if you prefer using distances, then you can do that instead. Um, the next one, this is kind of more important. I would say this is probably a really important one actually, and it's kind of the thing that's really finicky when you're using it. And so this is the shape of the um, particles themselves. So if I go ahead and I just drag this along so we have a couple particles to work with. And go ahead and hit preview here you can see when i check off preview and sorry i need to actually apply this material to the emitter for you to see that you can see here these spheres that are showing up is roughly the area that the um that that fire is going to take up so when i'm looking at the fire this is roughly what that fire will look like and like sort of the area that it would take up and so um i can get an idea for what that kind of looks like and so for example if i wanted to change that to a cylinder shape i can see okay the fire can take up like all of this area now um, that's inside there or boxes i can see what that looks like and all that stuff <clears throat> and so what this actually looks like i can show you right now um, and it will actually bring me nicely into another topic let me just quickly 
dock the material editor for a second. Whoops. Go ahead and do that. Um, but for example, now if I go ahead and render this, you will see that we don't get anything. And the reason that we don't get anything is because, like I said before, we actually need one more piece to this, and that is this tracer. And what this tracer does is it basically says that anything within the geometry will show up. So for example, if we put this into an environment which covers the entire scene, and we go ahead and do this, well now, if we go ahead and render, everything that we have that's inside there will now be rendered. So everything in the scene is currently being rendered. So this is what the uh, the particle system looks like from um, uh, once it's been rendered out. But now let's say, for example, that I only wanted part of this to show up. I could go ahead and I could put a cube in and I could put the volume tracer on that cube. And then let's say I put it like here, for example, and I go ahead and I re-render that again. You will see now there's a cutoff because where the cube geometry ends, it just doesn't render anything else. So this allows you to basically control exactly where, um, exactly what parts of your scene will show up and exactly what parts of your um, simulation will actually show up themselves. So if I go ahead and I'm just gonna put that environment back and we change, we go back into the material and we go ahead and we change it from being, let me undock this one more time, and we change it from being a box to let's just say like a sphere like it was originally so that's what this sphere looks like now if we go ahead and we render that out now we can see how changing the shape changes a lot of how it actually gets generated and on top of this there's a ton of settings that you can go into here to change exactly what that looks like uh, i'll let you play around with those yourself and you can see sort of what works best for you and again always remember that when you have the if you go to globals here and hit preview you can get a good idea of what it's going to look like by just doing that now the next tab here is illumination. This one, I kind of, I really enjoy this tab. This basically just lets you control sort of obviously the illumination. So you can basically say, okay, I want it to give off like this much light, for example, and I want it to do these things. Um, you can control that in here. And then if I go, for example, you want to actually see it in here because it's part of the material. But if I go ahead and I render this out now, you'll see there's actually more, there's actually nothing else in the scene. So I can't really show it, but, um, you can use your illumination from here, or alternatively, if you want to turn that off completely, there's also, you can just use this luminosity feature. I find that this actually works pretty well as well. So if I go ahead and I set this to like 50% luminosity, for example, and then maybe I bump up the sensitivity a little bit, so let's maybe make the sensitivity like 18, for example, and I go ahead and re-render this, you'll see this is much brighter than this first one that we saw here. And if I go ahead and I make this luminosity like 20%, and re-render it. This is what we currently have. If I go ahead and re-render it when it's at 20% from 50%, you'll see it's a lot less bright. And this does affect um, global illumination and stuff like that. Now for shadows, uh, the only thing that I want to mention here, this is the last tab that I'm going to go through. The only thing that I want to mention for shadows here is that receiving shadows uh, doesn't have a huge performance effect, but casting shadows themselves does actually have a huge performance effect. So be careful when you're using casting shadows because you will find it will slow down your render by quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if it'll make a huge difference on this size of a render. No, it didn't really make a huge difference, but on larger renders, especially with global illumination enabled, um, casting shadows definitely slows things down. So just keep that in mind. Everything else is just a matter of sort of playing around and uh, seeing what you got. Uh, if you wanted to make, you know, make this more of like a spectral fire, for example, you can go ahead and you can make these like this sort of color and then go through and redo it and you can see that's what it looks like and whatnot. Um, additionally, for the actual emitter itself, if you want to play around with some other stuff, um, there are ways to make it more realistic by using these forces options. So these forces options will allow you to apply forces like wind and turbulence and gravity and like all of that sort of stuff to these emitter particles themselves. So I would highly recommend playing around with that a lot as well. And that fundamentally is how you get started using or creating your own fire and stuff like that inside of Cinema 4D. Um, and it's if you play around with it enough, you can get it to a pretty decent place. Uh, this is for some of the test renders I did earlier using a very similar setup, just messing around with different things. So um, yeah, that's basically everything. And thank you for watching.